In every brick, the start of someone's story. Someone who feels sad, alone. Someone else who shares their pain too. This is a construct of a wall, meant to break down the walls between virtual strangers. I think I was just really sad and I needed someone to relate to, someone to talk to. Cassandra Somer Flaro is a member of what's called the Big White Wall, an anonymous mental health forum where people can post how they're feeling and count on someone listening. It's nice to talk to people. Does it make you feel safe knowing that it's always there? Yeah, 24-7, like panic attack at 3 a.m., check, you're good to go, you're good to go. You got the wall and you can rely on the wall and there's people there for you and there's been people replying back at 3 a.m. so you don't need to worry about no one not replying to you. Cassandra struggles with anxiety, is grateful for the days she doesn't feel alone. She finds comfort in a place where no one knows her name. I like that it's anonymous. Like, no one knows who you are, so if you need to open up about something, you don't have to go to a therapist or wait until Thursday to see your therapist. It's kind of like an immediate way of getting relief and, like, help. Free, day or night, 24-7. It's the only site like it in Canada, and the point is to make mental health care accessible. And someone really is always there. Connie Lee is a trained counselor and one of the wall guides who monitors the site around the clock. On any given shift, she acts like a facilitator and jumps in when she feels she has to. For us, in our role as wall guides, we also want to make sure if a member has not received a response right away that we also chime in and we try to also get the community to respond and encourage that. So that's part of our role that, you know, people are not ignored. Most of the people who use the site are feeling overwhelmed, sad, anxious. A key part of Connie's job is about identifying someone in real crisis and making sure they get help. We've had members that have come online and have said that they felt very hopeless to the point where they're not even sure if they felt like they had a reason um, to live and to walk someone through that experience um, and help them find some source of hope, I think that those are the stories that really stick for me. Shattering that solitude and the stigma, that is the goal. The website was created in the UK and piloted in Ontario. Now up and running for a year, 20,000 people have already registered to use it. We have stories on the big white wall that people have come in and said, I've not talked to anybody about this. And you just get, they just get a flood of support from other people. And um, they can kind of go over days or months and then say, you know what, I feel strong enough now to go and talk to my family doctor or to go and talk to a counsellor about these issues. Harriet Ekperigin is with the Ontario Telemedicine Network, the government agency that oversees the site. When you're struggling with something that you haven't quite gotten to that point where you can be bold about your issues, I think the anonymity of it is really important because that's the first step to getting you to be bold. And at that point, that's when they can say, my name is Harriet and I have a depression or I have symptoms of depression. But until then, I think it's really difficult to be able to do that. So the majority, it is their first entry point? Yes, a lot of people um, is their first entry point, yes. Wow. What does that tell you? It tells me that stigma is still real. It tells me that um, access to mental health support, we still have a long way to go. Um, there are quite a, a lot of different access points for mental health, but A, either they're not well publicized so people don't know about them, or B, the wait lists are ridiculous. We've tried to make it more diverse. Mm -hmm. Younger people uh, so tend to use the site most, but seniors are a growing group of users too. The website markets to both demographics, usually in healthcare settings. Because a lot of people that go in for physical issues also have mental health issues, but they may not want to talk about it, so they can just slip this in their wallet. Okay, Harriet, we're up to you. All right. The neat thing about Big White Wall is But the plan is to bring the message to the masses as well. Yeah, so it's uh, people supporting people. Yeah. Yeah. Toronto's Transit Commission is listening. Suicide by rail is a constant concern. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think we'd like yeah. to work with you. Okay. Yeah. And after a recent pitch, now displays the website on its subway monitors. 
As for Cassandra, she manages her anxiety by taking long walks and seeing her therapist regularly. But going online makes her feel she has something more to offer too. Anyone can talk to anybody, anyone can help anyone. And I just simply go on there and I read the stories and if I feel like it's something I can touch on and I can help someone with or I might have advice to share or an experience to relate with, like it's nice to be able to put my opinion out there like, and just let them know like you have options. You don't need to feel down all the time. It's comfort from one kind stranger to another. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.